Okay, I've got this piece of 1050. It's 7 8 inch square and not quite 3 inches long. And I'm mainly going to use this handheld slitter to slit open the eye. You guys know I like to go slow at first to make sure I'm on my mark. But something I notice about this piece of steel, it just seems much harder than a normal 1050 medium carbon steel. And I really feel there's a lot of variation uh, in the amount of carbon in steels that have a similar designation. I need to give a very big shout out to two guys, uh, Jerry S. Hodges and David Evans for their really generous donations. Thanks very much, fellas. This handle slitter has a much steeper cutting angle, so it will help me to make the final cut through. Go, buddy. You guys don't see it, but the birds just won't let me rest until I give them something to eat. There you go. Eat them up. I've got all kinds of birds coming at me over here. I've got my anvils in a sort of temporary configuration until I figure out which way works best and so they're wobbling a bit more than usual because I don't have them really secured too well. It's kind of weird how it's flaring up using the guillotine tool on this heat. I just realized it's because I sprayed the guillotine tool down with oil. Initially here I should have held this at a, at a lower angle. Uh, it's starting to make the uh, steel is starting to fold onto itself, which I'll have to correct later. Also, you know, I'm a guy who makes tongs, but I don't have a, a tongue that works just well for this workpiece. The two tongs that you'll see me using are a little bit, they're splayed a little bit too wide and a little bit uncomfortable, though they work.
this hammer to have one relatively flat face and one heavily radius face, though not as radius as, say, a ball peen hammer, so more like a rounding style. don't like grinding so much, so I'm trying to uh, get it as close as possible uh, via hand hammering. And I think what I'll do in the future is I'm going to make a hardy tool that will help with this. That little spot in the center will need to be ground off, but that's really not much. This is where my new anvil really helps. I wanted to create sort of a drooping effect on this hammer, and since it's really small, just one heat is enough. And I'd like to accomplish the same thing on my uh, standard Japanese style hammer. So this anvil's really gonna do the trick for me. I just put in a few minutes of grinding on each face. Uh, what I plan to use this small hammer for is for riveting small steel and especially copper rivets. So I'll show that in a future video. Thanks a lot.